we are intelligent. That's an assumption. We have defined circumstances. We've defined behavior as exhibited by humans versus other animals. We've defined that to be intelligent, but would some other species make the same assessment? I think about this often. We have not successfully communicated in any meaningful way with any other species on Earth. A few hand gestures maybe, that's it. We haven't exchanged any kind of meaningful thoughts. Even species that are genetically similar to us, such as chimpanzees. So now let's go to some other planet, some other life form, and the audacity for us to even suggest that we would be able to communicate with it, when there's no DNA in common at all. We, we can't communicate with other life with common DNA. Go to another planet and say, well, we're intelligent solely so we can communicate with each other? No, I, I, that, that's hubristic to presume that we are the measure of the capacity to communicate. What I've noticed over the decades that I've paid attention to this, the other animals in the animal kingdom, whenever we presume some level of intelligence for them, further research shows that they're smarter than we ever thought, or cleverer than we ever gave them credit for being. Humans aren't as good as we should be in our capacity to empathize with feelings and thoughts of others, be they humans or other animals on Earth. So maybe part of our formal education should be training in empathy. Imagine how different the world would be if, in fact, that were reading, writing, arithmetic, empathy. <laughs> My kids, they're perfectly happy watching animal shows on our large flat panel television without the need to run to a circus and see shackled animals walk around in circles. I think most children take very kindly to animals, and I've always remarked, not really understanding why it's so, but it clearly works, that most children's programming involves talking animals bringing lessons to children rather than people. Something must happen after childhood for those who then feel compelled to disrespect the very animals that taught them how to spell or how to read. I spent a lot of my early life just trying to get into the head of a dog and try to understand their emotions. And I think that changed me for the better. Because every time I look at an animal, I just say, I wonder what they're thinking about. Animals, so they behave in funny ways, and some of the highest hit YouTube clips are animals behaving in funny ways, usually in their interaction with their owners. I think that kind of exposure to the animal kingdom is a good thing, and people who separate themselves from that experience, that can't be good. Because then if you don't think about it, it's easy to then discount it or, not, or to not care. And we've already seen how humans behave when you've decided that you don't care. It's ugly.